Online game, I possess a monster merging simulator. Chapter 271, Horrifying Discovery, The Terrifying Tyrant What the heck? I don't understand. Is Tyrant too petty? Helping to defend the city actually gives an ordinary VIP title. Don't jump to conclusions. There might be other rewards in the event panel. Some players defended Tyrant. They all believed that the reward of the event was not as simple as the announcement had made it out to be. However, when they opened the mission panel, everyone was dumbfounded. Event Mission, Protecting the Cold Desolate Dragon City Event Content Participation Requirement, Player of the Order Faction, Payment of One Gold Coin Event Reward, Ordinary VIP Title Event Time, 48 Hours Later Event Introduction, City Lord of the Cold Desolate Dragon City, Tyrant, requests that you protect his city. After accepting the mission, you will obtain the right to stand on the city wall and kill monsters. However, the premise is that you must pay one gold coin to let him know that you are not here to make up the numbers. When you assist the City Lord of Tyrant in completing the mission, you will become the honorable owner of an ordinary VIP title in the Cold Desolate Dragon City. Damn. When the players reacted, their anger exploded. This tyrant is simply too stingy. Damn, I'm laughing from anger. This tyrant is really toxic. He invited us to help him defend the city, but we still have to give him a gold coin. Are you my real father? Seeing this mission requirement, I really want to hammer that guy. I'm so angry that I can't speak. Let him posture. I want to see how this kid will defend the city alone. Serves him right if he dies. The players cursed crazily. Originally, a portion of them were still considering whether to help Tyrant defend the city. Now, there was no need to consider. Only a fool would help him pay a gold coin. Boss, is this Tyrant crazy? He dares to publish such an event. In cold desolate Dragon City. An archer player was talking to another swordsman player. They were the higher UPS of the Fire Beacon Guild. When they heard this announcement, the archer player behind them frowned. No, that just means that his mind is very clear. Fire Beacon shook his head and smiled meaningfully, the reason why he dared to issue such a condition is to show that he is confident in killing the two bosses. What do you mean? The archer player beside was even more confused. Even if he's confident, what has this got to do with making such an event announcement? He really did not understand. Now that the cold desolate Dragon City was facing the problem of the monsters attacking the city, Tyrant should fight for the other players to join. After all, most of the monsters attacking the city were monsters. Their numbers were very large, and it was definitely not something a player could deal with. But why did Tyrant do this? How were the two related? While he was confused, the player called Fire Beacon continued, Tyrant made such an announcement to tell us that even without our help, he can solve all the problems alone. If that's true, then us large guilds have to fight for this spot. Because the city defense of the cold desolate Dragon City is very powerful, ordinary monsters can't break through the defense of this city. Therefore, as long as we join the defense battle, we can stand on the city wall and kill the monsters that attack the city in the safest and most relaxed manner. A large city like the cold desolate Dragon City will face many monsters, so this is a chance for us to quickly level up. Oh. I understand now. Tyrant is playing hard to get. The archer player nodded and said, it seems that he doesn't need the help of us players to make such a confident statement, but he's actually using the benefits to force us to participate. Right now, the guilds of Iron Skull City are competing for the second city creation token. Be it obtaining the city creation token or building the main city, we need powerful strength. Therefore, we cannot give up this opportunity to level up. Tyrant saw this and used this method to inform us. Moreover, he set the cost of one gold coin. In this way, he can obtain a large amount of gold coins while getting free helpers. Hearing these explanations, the surrounding players' eyes widened. Heavens! 
how could he have thought of such a strange plan? The higher UPS of the guild were stunned. They had always thought that Tyrant was only pretending to be confident, but in the end, he had hidden many schemes in just a few words. He was simply a demon in disguise. No, that gold coin actually has another use. At this moment, Fire Beacon continued to shake his head and smile, the main purpose of that gold coin is to eliminate the solo players. This way, there will be enough monsters to provide to the players who are willing to participate in the war. To be precise, Tyrant's initial goal was actually us, these large guilds. All of his designs were targeted at us. This is the most brilliant aspect, because only the players of large guilds have enough combat strength. Only us guild elites can provide combat strength for the cold desolate dragon city at this stage. What? Even this is a scheme. This guy is too terrifying. One plan after another, tyrant is too terrifying. Is there still trust between people? My intelligence is not enough. Boss, according to you, we have to participate, but what if Tyrant is really just acting? The archer player asked. Hearing this question, Fire Beacon smiled again and asked, Even if Tyrant is lying, can you sit back and do nothing? With that, Fire Beacon walked towards the city lord's area. The archer player thought about it and realized that he had to participate. The reason was very simple, and that was to avoid accidents. If Tyrant really had the strength to deal with the two bosses, the guilds that participated in this war would obtain a huge level advantage. Moreover, they might be on good terms with Tyrant and even obtain some benefits in the cold desolate Dragon City. Therefore, no matter the result, as long as one could not determine if Tyrant could defeat the two bosses, they had to participate. This would result in the least losses and the greatest benefits. Thinking of this, the higher UPS of the Fire Beacon Guild shivered and felt that Tyrant was too monstrous. Chapter 272, Aisha Reaches Level 30 Sisters, it's time for us to repay Tyrant's kindness again. Now, please select 10,000 players with the highest levels and let us happily help him complete the city defense mission. Twinkle Rose ordered her sisters. What? 10,000 people. Guild leader what are you trying to do? Last time, there were 50,000 people. This time, there are 10,000. Our Silver Snow Guild is about to become Tyrant's harem. If anything happens, we will be the first to do it. That's right, Guild Leader Sister. If you like Tyrant, just say it. Wouldn't it be easier for us to directly join the cold desolate Dragon City? We can save on the 10,000 gold coins entrance fee. I also think that a marriage alliance is a good thing. In the future, when we enter the cold desolate dragon city, we won't have to pay the toll. The group of beauties in the guild discussed with smiles, beginning to tease Twinkle Rose. This made the beautiful guild leader's face turn red. She could not stand the continuous bombardment of these girls. Shut up, stop talking. Twinkle Rose shouted loudly, drowning out everyone's voices. Then, she stared at the two little girls who had been smiling the most and said, Warm my bed tonight. You'll wear milky-colored long socks and you'll wear black long socks. Put on cat ears and tail. Hey? Guild leader, I can't. You'll play for too long. I can't take it. That's right, sister guild leader. I warmed the bed the day before yesterday. Can you let me go this time? My body can't take it. No. I just want the two of you. At the same time, different voices sounded from the guilds. They all saw through Lorne's scheme. After all, it was a large guild with 100,000 people. There were many talents in the management, so it was not difficult to see the meaning. However, what troubled them now was how many people to send. No one was confident of winning this defense war. Tyrant's confident declaration did not have much credibility in front of them, so they were still very hesitant. Fortunately, there were two days to consider, so they were not in a hurry to make a decision. As the person involved, Lorne spent the rest of the time very relaxed. 
he was not worried about the city defense war. In his eyes, as long as the system did not give him a fatal outcome, he would definitely win. After all, he was a man who could deal tens of thousands of damage. Of course, he had something to do recently. That was to level up Aisha. Before the city defense event began, he would level up Aisha to 30. This would allow her to display greater strength in the following event. Therefore, after resting on this day, he entered the forest. Ding! You have killed a lizardman. Ding! 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 During this period of time, Lorne found a new training ground. The lizardmen here were level 43 super high level monsters. Due to their powerful skin resistance, the other pets were very helpless. Moreover, the distribution was very messy, so it was relatively difficult to kill them. Fortunately, Aisha had high damage and could still kill 10 to 20 monsters per minute. The agile elven assassin landed beside the monster like a flower. Before the monster could react, the sharp dagger slashed through its throat. While killing the monsters, Lorne paid more attention to the information on the system interface. It could be seen that the people from the large guilds were beginning to stir. After going offline yesterday, not many people had chosen to register for the city guard event the entire night. But now, they signed up in groups. The total number of people was increasing. Some were even teams with thousands of people, and they were coming in waves. It was unknown how much money Lorne had obtained. In short, the total number of people on the event panel was 73,500. One gold coin per person was equivalent to 73,500 gold coins. Moreover, this number was still growing rapidly. At this rate, it could probably accumulate to about 200,000. This number suited Lorne's initial plan. In fact, he felt that 100,000 was enough. If there were too many people, it would instead divide the experience of the monsters too thinly, causing the difference in levels between the players to shrink. However, thinking that he could earn money, Lorne immediately dismissed the idea. At this moment, the more people the better. It was best if the entire city wall could not stand up, so that he could use this money to fill the huge hole in the city's defenses. In addition, he had to give Twinkle Rose a thumbs up. This beautiful guild leader worked very hard in the past few activities. First, she supported tens of thousands of people to participate in the city construction, and now, she directly sent 10,000 guild elites to help defend the city. To be honest, such support was quite heartwarming. At least this big busted sister had some conscience. Previously in the beginner village, he had helped this big busted sister a lot. After reaching the main city, it was even more impressive. Many money-making matters first thought of her. This time, Twinkle Rose would receive a huge reward for her actions. Because the difficulty of this event was SSSSS rank, the quality and number of monsters would definitely be very high. At that time, relying on the high city wall of the cold desolate Dragon City, it would basically be equivalent to standing on the city wall to pick up experience. This big busted sister would definitely make a killing again. Ding. You have killed a lizardman, X11. Ding. 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 Congratulations on using 1.9 million experience points to raise your pet Aisha to level 28. After fighting in the forest for 3 to 4 hours, Lorne finally had enough experience to level up Aisha, and the monsters here were becoming rare. He did not stay any longer and headed to another area. As for the gains during this period of time? In fact, Lorne had always gained a lot from killing monsters. He had high luck, which was the main reason why he had such a high drop rate. However, the quality of these equipment and items was relatively low. Lorne basically packed them tightly. After returning to the cold desolate Dragon City, he would place them in the shop to sell. Then, Lorne hunted in a new area. As he watched his experience points increase rapidly, he watched the number of people participating in the event increase crazily. Under such a double stimulation, time passed very quickly. 
About ten hours later, Lorne finally accumulated all the experience needed to level up Aisha and raised her level. In the next second, two consecutive golden lights poured down. Aisha's level finally reached the long-awaited level 30. Chapter 273, Ice Crystal Unicorn Set Ding! Congratulations on using 1.96 million experience points to raise your pet Aisha to level 29. Congratulations on using 2.02 million experience points to raise your pet Aisha to level 30. Ding! Congratulations to your pet Aisha for reaching level 30 and awakening the skill Mirror Phantom. Skill, Mirror Phantom. Effect, summons a shadow that can replicate the user's own movements. This shadow will cause the same attack effect on the target as the main body. However, it cannot replicate combo skills, displacement, stealth, and other effects. However, it can replicate additional effects such as critical hits, speed reduction, stun, and others. Restrictive skills have half the effect. Cooldown, 10 seconds. Consumption, none. When Aisha reached level 30, she awakened a new skill. This skill was a little too heaven defying. Its effect was to summon a mirror image to replicate the movements of the main body and could also replicate the damage output of critical hits. This would give Aisha greater damage output. Aisha's critical strike was already very terrifying. Now that it was doubled again, it was naturally even more terrifying. In addition, after leveling up, Aisha still had dozens of skill points on her. The pets around Lorne could not level up their skills through repeated practice. They could only level up with the skill points gained after leveling up, which was different from players. Without thinking, he followed the usual method of adding points. The next second, light poured from Aisha's body. Ding! Skill Phantom Backstab has successfully evolved into Phantom Blink. Evolved? Lorne's eyes lit up as he quickly opened Aisha's skill panel. Skill, Phantom Blink. Effect 1, Blink to the back of the target. The first attack will definitely be a critical hit and increase attack speed by 200%. Duration, 2 seconds. Blink distance increased to 20 yards. Effect 2, after killing the target, the cooldown will be refreshed immediately. So powerful. When he saw the skill effect, Lorne could not help but be surprised. The upgrade of this skill did not ordinarily increase the range of movement, but instead evolved it into a higher level skill. Originally, Aisha could use killing to refresh the invisibility effect, and that was already very terrifying. Now, she also had the skill of killing to refresh her blink, which allowed her to move freely through the crowd and dodge at extremely long distances. With this skill, Aisha should have more control over the battlefield two days later. Lorne nodded in satisfaction. He was increasingly confident in the defense of the city. Master, is there a huge battle ahead? Aisha put away the dagger and looked curiously at the muttering Lorne. Yes, there's a more difficult battle ahead. Lorne nodded, the establishment of the cold desolate dragon city makes the nearby creatures uneasy. They have gathered a large number of monsters and are preparing to attack the cold desolate dragon city tomorrow, but the city defense weapons of the cold desolate dragon city are not equipped yet. We can only rely on our own strength to block the attacks of the monsters this time, especially you. In the battle a day later, you will need to face the two most powerful bosses. How about it? Are you confident, Aisha? Don't worry, Master. I'll do my best. The elven girl raised her small fists and looked very confident. Lorne touched her head, then opened his attributes panel. It was time to raise his level. Aisha was the last pet to raise its level to 30. Now that she had finished leveling up, it also meant that Lorne had unlocked the level limit and could raise his level to 40. It just so happened that he had stored enough experience previously. Now he could directly level up. Ding! Congratulations on using 416,000 experience points to raise your level to 31. 
Congratulations on using 424,000 experience points to raise your level to 32. Congratulations on using 440,000 experience points to raise your level to 33. Congratulations on using 488,000 experience points to raise your level to 40. Ding! Congratulations on reaching level 40. You have received Pet Space Plus 1. Ding! Warning! Due to you being a summoner, your level has been locked. Please raise your pet to level 40 and enter the main city to complete the class change. Now that Lorne had successfully reached level 40, something uncomfortable happened. As a summoner, he had to let his pets reach level 40 before he could reach class 2. Fortunately, Lorne had encountered such a thing once in the beginner village. He was already mentally prepared for it and did not hesitate. In any case, his recent goal had not been to change his class, but to reach level 40. This was because after reaching level 40, he could open the platinum equipment treasure chest in his bag, obtain the platinum equipment set, and change his scattered equipment. Lorne took out the platinum set treasure chest that had been there for a long time. He opened it directly. Swish. After a brilliant silver light flashed, a short staff appeared in the treasure chest. It was shimmering with light, and it was obvious that it was not ordinary equipment. Ding! Unlocking the class set treasure chest. Obtained, Ice Crystal Unicorn Staff, Platinum, Dot. Ice Crystal Unicorn Staff, Ice Crystal Unicorn Set, 1 7. Grade, Platinum. Magic Attack, Plus 1100. MP, plus 1000. Intelligence, plus 180. Spirit, plus 100. Additional effect, cast range plus 20%. Additional effect, increases the strength of magic attacks by 10%. Special effect, ice crystal horn, increases the user's magic attack by 280 points. Type, weapon. Level requirement, 40. Introduction, a staff refined from a horn dropped from an ice crystal unicorn. It has incomparably powerful magic power. What high attributes? Lorne was shocked as soon as he glanced at the attributes of the equipment. The attributes of this equipment seemed to be a little too much. It was also a platinum equipment. The short staff that Lorne was using only increased his magic attack by 700 points but this equipment directly increased by 1,100 points. The basic data was even higher than the platinum level vast ocean ring. Of course, the player's weapon was an equipment with the highest attack attributes, and the ring was a rare equipment part. Under normal circumstances, the attributes increased were relatively balanced. 1,100 basic attributes, 180 intelligence, and 280 points from the effect. This adds up to 2,100 magic attack points. Indeed, equipment is the most direct choice for players to increase their strength. After some consideration, Lorne realized that the attributes of this equipment were more than 60% higher than other platinum grade staffs. Moreover, it was a set part. When there were other set parts, the set attributes would be automatically activated. This number was definitely not low. After all, even the attributes of the silver set were very outstanding. As a platinum set, it had to have a stronger effect. With that in mind, Lorne took out the return scroll from the cold desolate dragon city and crushed it. Chapter 274, Opening 40 Platinum Treasure Chests in a Row When a player obtained a set part, they could obtain other parts of the set after killing monsters and opening treasure chests. Therefore. Lorne needed to find other parts. There was still one day before the monsters attacked the cold desolate dragon city. He had to maximize his strength in this period of time. The purpose of this was not to win this city defense war. It was because Lorne wanted to see how powerful Aisha could be. After all, her attributes came from Lorne. As long as Lorne's attributes increased by one point, hers would directly increase by four points. With such a terrifying amplification, 
Lorne wanted to see how far Aisha could go after he changed into platinum equipment. As for how to obtain the remaining equipment? It was very simple. Lorne's idea was to open treasure chests. It was not a realistic option to kill the boss at the last moment to obtain equipment. Using the mechanism of opening the treasure chest to obtain the set was the most ideal way. In his warehouse, there were already several platinum treasure chests. Let's give it a try. As a man with 21 luck points I don't believe that I can't get the equipment I want. Lorne returned to the cloud top hall and opened his bag. He took out the platinum equipment treasure chest. There were a total of four. These platinum equipment treasure chests were obtained from the mission reward. Ever since he obtained the class set treasure chest, he had been saving them and had not taken them out. Today, it was finally time to open them. Without hesitation, Lorne chose a platinum equipment treasure chest. Open. With that, a brilliant light lit up. Ding. Unlocking the equipment treasure chest. Obtained, Moonlight War Boots, Platinum. This was a top-grade combat boots with excellent attributes. Unfortunately, this was not the set part that Lorne wanted. He could only set it aside and continue to take another treasure chest. Open. Ding. Unlocking the equipment treasure chest. Obtained, Hurricane Armor, Platinum. This was also a good equipment, but unfortunately, it was not a part of the Crystal Unicorn set. Lorne looked helplessly at the other two treasure chests. This time, he opened both treasure chests at the same time, hoping to change his luck. However, the result was unbearable. Lorne obtained two ordinary platinum items again, their attributes even worse than before. Seeing this, Lorne began to wonder if his luck was wrong. On the system interface, there were clearly 21 luck points. Why could he not obtain what he wanted even after opening four platinum treasure chests? Was he playing a fool? No, I have to open a few more. Lorne no longer had any platinum treasure chests on him, but he knew where to find them. It was in the event warehouse of the cold desolate Dragon City. As the initiator of this event, Lorne could change the reward temporarily. The only requirement was that he had to use items of the same level to exchange for it. In other words, as long as he had platinum equipment, he could exchange for the 40 platinum equipment treasure chests. It just so happened that there were four platinum equipment in front of Lorne. Without thinking, he replaced the platinum equipment treasure chests with them. A platinum equipment exchanged for a platinum equipment treasure chest did not seem to be a losing deal. In fact, to many players, this was a huge benefit. This was because the players themselves had a fixed class. For example, the warrior class could not wear cloth armor equipment, and the mage class could not wear armor equipment. This way, opening the platinum treasure chest was a very tense moment for them. Among these players, most could not achieve their expectations. Typically, they would offer equipment that they had no use for and could only give it to others or sell it for money. These two methods were helpless for the players. Therefore, in most cases, they preferred to buy equipment directly instead of buying equipment and treasure chests to gamble on luck. As for the effect on Lorne? Opening the equipment treasure chest might allow him to obtain equipment of a lower quality. This way, he would lose some money. Lorne did not care. To him, he had to obtain the equipment he wanted. He would not hesitate to open all 40 platinum equipment treasure chests. Lorne did not think too much about it. He took out the four treasure chests and opened them. Ding! Unlocking the equipment treasure chest. Obtained, heroic wrist guard, platinum. Unlocking the equipment treasure chest. Obtained, rock leg guard, platinum. Unlocking the equipment treasure chest. Obtained, Gale War Boots, Platinum. Unlocking the equipment treasure chest. Obtained, Forest Magic Robe, Platinum. Four system notifications appeared. Lorne still did not obtain the equipment he wanted. He did not stop. 
he used these four items to exchange for four platinum equipment treasure chests. Then, he continued to open it. Four. Eight. Twelve. Sixteen. The first ten or so treasure chests did not satisfy Lorne. He even wondered if he could really obtain the equipment he wanted by doing this. At this moment, a new batch of notifications sounded. Ding! Unlocking the equipment treasure chest. Obtained, Assault Bracer, Platinum. Unlocking the equipment treasure chest. Obtained, War Spear, Platinum. Unlocking the equipment treasure chest. Obtained, Ice Crystal Unicorn Robe, Platinum. Unlocking the equipment treasure chest. Obtained, Ice Crystal Unicorn Bracer, Platinum. He had obtained two items of the set. Thinking that he was hallucinating, Lorne quickly opened the system interface to check the information. Only then did he confirm that he had really obtained two parts of the Ice Crystal Unicorn set. Very good, continue. Lorne was not in a hurry to check the attributes of the equipment. Instead, he increased his speed and replaced the other Platinum Equipment treasure chests, then opened them all. Perhaps the Goddess of Luck was really watching over him. When he opened the remaining 20 Platinum Equipment treasure chests, he actually obtained another set part. Moreover, this equipment was the helm. Among magic equipment, head equipment were the best in terms of attributes apart from weapons and magic robes. In this case, Lorne had already obtained the equipment with the highest attributes in the set. He believed that the attributes increase brought by them would be the greatest. With that in mind, Lorne could not wait to check the attributes of the three platinum set parts. Chapter 275 Crazy Attributes Ice Crystal Unicorn Robe, Ice Crystal Unicorn Set, 1 7. Grade, Platinum. HP, plus 2000. MP, plus 1000. Defense, plus 300. Magic Resistance, plus 300. Spirit, plus 100. Additional Effect, MP Recovery Effect plus 100%. Additional effect, increases magic defense by 10%. Special effect, unicorn fur, increases the user's defense by 200 points. Type, cloth armor. Level requirement, 40. Introduction, a magic robe refined from the fur of an ice crystal unicorn when it was shedding. It has powerful tenacity and resistance. This equipment increased HP, MP, and resistances. It was the best equipment with the best overall attributes. Not only that, but the attributes of this equipment were very outstanding, especially its defense. It directly increased by 500 points. This was a height that was difficult to reach for cloth armor equipment. Ice Crystal Unicorn Bracer, Ice Crystal Unicorn Set, 1-7. Grade, Platinum. Magic Attack, plus 500. MP, plus 1000. Spirit, plus 100. Intelligence, plus 50. Additional effect, attack damage increased by 10%. Additional effect, increases magic defense by 10%. Special effect, unicorn crystal hoof, increases the user's magic attack by 200 points. Type, cloth armor. Level requirement, 40. Introduction, a bracer refined from the hooves of an ice crystal unicorn. It has incredible magic power. Bracer parts had always been synonymous with attack power, and it was no exception for magic classes. This wrist guard could deal 900 magic damage to Lorne. To the current Lorne, it was the equipment type that he wanted the most. He directly removed the gold bracer from his hand and took out the additional equipment protection barrier. Then. He combined the new equipment with this platinum level additional equipment to create an even more brilliant and exquisite high level wrist guard. Finally, Lorne looked at the head equipment he had finally obtained. The warrior's head equipment was a helmet, and most players of the magic class were wearing head accessories or hoods. They looked lighter than helmets, but the effect was still powerful. As for Lorne's one, 
it looked even more incredible, because it was a small crystal crown. Ice Crystal Unicorn Crown, Ice Crystal Unicorn Set, 1-7. Grade, Platinum. HP, plus 1000. MP, plus 1000. Intelligence, plus 100. Spirit, plus 100. Additional Effect, MP Recovery Effect plus 100%. Additional Effect, Magic Attack plus 300. Special Effect, Unicorn's Crown, when using Magic Attacks, there is a 25% chance of triggering the Ice Crystal Unicorn's Lightning Punishment skill. It will deal 150% magic damage to the target. Type, Cloth Armor. Level Requirement, 40. Introduction, made from the horn of a female ice crystal unicorn. It has incomparably powerful magic power. Good equipment. Lorne's eyes lit up. The equipment in front of him was not only outstanding in appearance, the additional attributes were the most astonishing. In addition to providing 1000 HP and MP, this equipment also provided 700 magic attack power and a passive effect. When attacking, there was a 25% chance of dealing additional damage to the target. To the players, this was definitely an equipment that was worth fighting for. Especially the appearance of this equipment, it was simply a legendary divine equipment. To be honest, such a crown was very suitable for Lorne's current identity. After all, he was already the lord of a large city. However, he did not like such an ostentatious appearance. After admiring it, he still chose to hide the special effects of the equipment. Then, Lorne opened the set effect. Ice Crystal Unicorn Set. Grade, Platinum. 2, Magic Attack plus 100, MP plus 400, Triggered. 3, Magic Attack plus 100, MP plus 400, Triggered. 4, Magic Attack plus 200, MP plus 800, Triggered. 5. Magic Attack plus 200, MP plus 800. 6. Magic Attack plus 300, MP plus 1200. 7. Magic Attack plus 400, MP plus 1600. Gasp. Lorne gasped, not knowing how to describe his emotions. The attributes of those set parts were already very sick. Now that the set effect was triggered, it could actually increase so many attributes. Just the effect of four items actually gave 400 magic attack and 1600 MP. These attributes were even better than one of the equipment in the set. Moreover, this was only a four-piece set. If Lorne could collect all seven in the future, the final effect would definitely be comparable to three pieces of equipment. In other words, the attributes of this crystal unicorn set with seven pieces of equipment would be equivalent to ten other platinum equipment. Very good. It's time to see my current attributes. Ever since he had these powerful pets, Lorne had not cared much about his attributes. If not for the fact that Aisha was tied to his attributes, he would not have been so looking forward to seeing the attributes data. Huff. Taking a deep breath. Lorne opened the character panel. ID, Tyrant. Class, Official Summoner. Level, 40, 0 992,000. Bloodline, Divine Dragon Bloodline, 10% Purity. Potential, 10 stars, plus 5 stars. Talent, Monster Merging Simulator, Dragon's Pharmacopoeia, Legendary, Master of Experience, Legendary. Treasure Seeking, Legendary. Skill, Hellhound Summoning, Orange, Cooperative Strike, Orange, Triple Blink, Orange, Damage Transfer, Orange, Super Frequency Release, Orange, Energy Shield, Orange. HP, 15400 slash 15400, plus 1540. MP. 18,400 slash 18,400, plus 1,840. Magic attack, 6,623 to 13,246. Physical defense, 
1547. Magic Resistance, 1875. Speed, 146.1, plus 14.6. Attributes, Constitution 445, Strength 215, Spirit 665, Intelligence 730, Agility 511. Divine Power, 80 slash 80. Free Attributes, 0. EXP, 154,142. Empire Reputation, 24,700. Dragon Race of Order Reputation, 2,700. Order Faction Reputation, 13,467. Night Elf Race Reputation, 50,520. Luck, 21. Possession, 23 gold coins, 43 silver coins, 68 bronze coins. This was Lorness attributes at level 40 after equipping the Ice Crystal Unicorn set. It could be seen that he already had 17,000 health points, 20,000 magic points, and a high magic attack of 6,623 points. His dual defense also exceeded 1,500 points. This was a high defense that only top shield warriors could have. That was not the point. As a summoner, his attributes were not that important. The most important thing was Aisha who depended on his attributes. When he saw that his magic attack had exceeded 6,000, Lorne could not wait to check Aisha's current attributes. When he opened her attributes panel, he was stunned. Chapter 276, 40,000 Attack Power Night Elf, Aisha Quality Class, Phantom Assassin, Legendary Status, Rank 1 Level, 30 0-4.16 million HP, 156,000-156,000 Masters HP times 10 MP, 185,000-185,000 Masters MP times 10 Physical Attack, 26,972-44,216 to Masters Magic Attack times 4 Physical Defense, 3,334, Master's Defense times 2. Magic Resistance, 3,990, Master's Magic Resistance times 2. Superiority, 100%. Owner, Tyrant. Skills, Phantom Blink, Traceless Phantom, Slow Dagger, Phantom Massacre, Absolute Dodge, Phantom Combo Plus, Elf Companion. Introduction, a night elf princess with powerful innate abilities. She is a legendary grade phantom assassin. This was Aisha's current attributes. It could be seen that because of the rapid increase in Lorna's attributes, Aisha's attributes had also increased greatly at this moment. Her attack power directly increased by two times, especially the upper limit of her attack. At this moment, it had already reached a terrifying 44,000. With such a terrifying attack and her high critical strike effect, the final damage would definitely exceed 100,000, or even higher. With such strength, how could cold desolate Dragon City encounter danger? While there's still some time, I'll enchant the equipment first. Lorne arrived at the Blacksmith Guild through the teleportation array. Equipment enchantment could allow the equipment to obtain stronger attributes. Once the enchantment was successful, it could increase 10 attack points and platinum equipment could be enchanted 50 times at most. If he enchanted all of them using the fire type enchantment gems, each platinum equipment could increase his magic attack by 500 points. Of course, to successfully enchant it, one needed luck and money. The more times the equipment was enchanted, the lower the probability of success, and the higher the price needed for each enchantment. If he wanted an equipment enchantment to succeed 50 times, he would need at least a few hundred gold coins, because when the equipment enchantment failed, it would damage the enchantment gem. Therefore, in reality, when enchanting equipment, it would consume a large number of enchantment gems. In addition, 
it also depended on luck when enchanting. If one was lucky, one enchantment gem could be enchanted once. If one was unlucky, they might not succeed even once with 10,000 enchantment gems. Lorne did not have to worry about the problem of gold coins. He was already immune to limitations like gold coins. After all, he had spent millions of gold coins a day. Coupled with the fact that the amount of gold coins in the cold desolate dragon city was too large, he had no such worries anymore. However, enchantment could not be succeeded just because one had money. Therefore, it required a lot of time to do this. The extent of the enchantment in a day depended on the blacksmith's performance. During this period of waiting, Lorne headed to the Alchemist Association. He had to quickly get Doge to arrange for the alchemists to enter the cold desolate dragon city and produce them as soon as possible to obtain the greatest benefits. Doge also understood the urgency of this matter. He began to use the Encyclopedia of Rare Herbs to contact the alchemist organizations in the surrounding cities. He wanted them to organize a branch in the cold desolate dragon city. This was something that was very difficult for most alchemist organizations to accept. This was because behind most alchemist organizations, there was a city, a tribe, or a race. In short, they were not completely free organizations, just like the current doge. However, when they heard that the city lord of cold desolate dragon city was the author of the Encyclopedia of Rare Herbs, these alchemist organizations displayed a different attitude. Some alchemist organizations that were relatively close to the cold desolate dragon city immediately accepted Doja's invitation. They planned to bring a group of alchemists to the cold desolate dragon city during this period of time. After hearing this news, Lorne finally felt much better. As long as the city had its own alchemist, coupled with the special medicinal formula he obtained from the dragon's pharmacopoeia, he believed that it could definitely make a name for the cold desolate dragon city. It was best to form a team of alchemy grandmasters and let them start refining rare potions. With these rare potions, it could attract more races to cold desolate dragon city, and it would be even closer to becoming a true free city. Mr. Tyrant, I've discussed this with the manager of the Gnome Mineral Company two days ago. They are very willing to cooperate with us. Regarding the update of the pharmacopoeia, they said that they will do their best to fulfill our request. Doge hesitated for a moment and continued, they have a request. Before we update the pharmacopoeia, we need to let them use it three days in advance. After three days, we can update the entire network. The gnome in charge said that if we agree to this request, they can waive the cost of equipment repair and will give us the earnings as soon as the equipment is updated. Mr. Tyrant, what do you think? Agree to it. Without thinking, Lorne nodded. In fact, the gnome's request was not a request at all. After all, the information in the pharmacopoeia was only a part of the dragon's pharmacopoeia. Even if the gnome mineral company could rely on the lack of information in the past three days to obtain many benefits, this did not affect Lorne and his cold desolate dragon city. After all, gnomes did business all over the world, and before the end of the game, Cold Desolate Dragon City should only have been doing business in Iron Skull City and the surrounding main cities. Moreover, that pharmacopoeia only had information on herbs. The truly valuable things were actually the formulas inside the dragon's pharmacopoeia. All right, I'll start forming the network in the next two days. After completing a portion of it, I'll do a pre-sales test between a few races and cities. Once I'm sure that there's no problem, I'll begin to transmit the first edition of the Encyclopedia of Rare Herbs and begin preparing for the first World's Tyrant Award. Doge said his plan seriously. At this moment, Lorne looked at him and said, Doge, now that the basic construction of the cold desolate dragon city has been completed, I hope to use the title of the World's First Tyrant Award to promote the reputation and market of the cold desolate dragon city. I understand. Doge said, I have already set the competition of the Tyrant Award and the award ceremony's location to the workshop area of the cold desolate Dragon City. However, this matter needs to be promoted for a period of time. At the very least, it can only be carried out after our encyclopedia is fully developed worldwide. 
Chapter 277, The Defense Event Begins Time passed quickly. It was already the day of the event. When Lorne had issued the city defense mission, the players had been cursing crazily, criticizing him for asking the players for help but still wanting to collect one gold coin. But now, it seemed that such criticism was pointless. This was because when the city defense mission started, the number of players who participated had already reached 271,000. In the entire Iron Skull City, more than 20 large guilds had basically chosen to participate in the event. Moreover, basically all of them were long-range professional players. Clearly, they had all seen the key point of this siege. It was that the city wall was tall enough to ensure the safety of everyone and resist the monsters. When the scene arrived at the cold desolate Dragon City, one could see that the city walls on both sides were filled with people. They were all carrying bows and arrows, holding magic staffs, and waiting for the impending battle. On a circular platform in the cold desolate Dragon City, countless players gathered. Their eyes looked at the distant city wall, wanting to know the situation at the front line of the battlefield. These people were all solo players who had not chosen to participate in the battle. Because they were not qualified to participate, they could not climb up the city wall, so they could only squeeze on this circular landing platform and stare ahead. Of course, most players still stayed in the city or in the wilderness. They used the Livestream channel of Divine Realm to watch the battle at the front line. Dear viewers, after two days of tense waiting, the siege war has finally begun. The difficulty of this siege is SSSSS rank, the highest level mission. Cold Desolate Dragon City, who does not have any defense weapons, cannot rely on the defense of the city to defeat this group of ferocious monsters. According to what I know, Tyrants Above the Clouds Guild only has him as a player, but even so, Tyrant still issued a special announcement of one gold coin signing up two days ago. Does he really have the confidence to win? Perhaps. Although I don't know if Tyrant really has the confidence to defeat his opponent alone, I know that the players of Iron Skull City are united. In order to protect this hard-earned player city, they resolutely joined the battle. Even I, Little Orange, can feel my blood boiling. Now, I don't want to determine the result. As a player, I only want to fight alongside everyone. No matter what the final result is, I will be proud of today's battle. The battle is about to begin. Please follow Little Orange and witness the first hot-blooded battle between the players since the opening of the Divine Realm. Beautiful female streamer Little Orange mixed into the battle team and began to live stream the entire scene. It could be seen that the number of people in the live stream was very terrifying. Almost every minute, it was increasing by hundreds of thousands. Before the battle live stream began, there were already 100 million viewers paying attention in real time. It was normal for such a situation to occur. After all, Cold Desolate Dragon City was the first player city and was a virtual city judged by the various financial institutions to have a potential of 10 billion. Now, be it the players or the audience in reality, they were all focused on this battle. Dear viewers, we have a live streamer who has already seen the army of monsters in the forest ahead. We will now receive the scene over there in the live stream. Little Orange quickly switched the live stream to a shared view. This was a scene transmitted from the Doomsday Forest in the northwest. In the scene, countless monsters were attacking in the direction of the cold desolate Dragon City. Among these monsters were rotting spiders, demonized cannibals, grave diggers, gluttonous ghosts, demonized apes, violent demon wolves, rotting corpses. These monsters mixed together and covered the sky. Especially when the view from above appeared, the audience could not help but gulp. Tyrant is really unlucky. There are probably more than a million monsters, and their quality is very high. I think it can't be defended. The impact of a million monsters is like a flood. This is not something that can be blocked by one person's strength. Not necessarily. After all, with such a high city wall and the help of more than 200,000 high-level players, it should not be defeated. In the live stream, the players discussed. 
the scene of more than a million monsters gathered was too visual for ordinary players like them. Most people even thought that the defense of the cold desolate Dragon City would instantly collapse. While everyone was discussing, the scene in the Livestream began to tremble. Boom. 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 A deafening roar sounded. At the same time, the ground trembled. Even the player who was sharing the scene could not stabilize his body. At this moment, all the audience's eyes were fixed on the screen. An incomparably huge stone pillar blocked the entire scene. Then, it slowly raised and uprooted the mountain and toppled the tree. After the other party walked away, everyone saw his full appearance. It was a huge monster that was 50 meters tall. Its entire body was made of rocks, and there were even countless lush trees growing on it. As it walked, the forest trembled and the mountains shook. Any player who had been in the ruins of the war knew this huge guy. It was the mountain giant king who had launched the entire siege. Although its main body was a mountain, it was actually a rock creature, and it was the most powerful mountain giant among them. This monster had a huge body, and because it was a rock, its resistance was extremely high. Even bosses of the same level could not break through its defense. Roar The mountain giant king let out a roar that shook the heavens and the earth. Immediately, all the monsters became even more excited. They quickened their steps and began to advance crazily. It's over, it's over. There's no hope left. My god, this mountain giant king is too huge. Such a huge body can probably smash the city wall of cold desolate dragon city into pieces. Tyrant is really in big trouble now. If things go wrong, all his investments in the cold desolate dragon city will be destroyed today. He deserves it. This is retribution. This kind of black-hearted businessman should be taught a lesson. That's right. Seeing Tyrant being taught a lesson makes me feel good. Chapter 278, A Grand Army of a Million Monster Roar As the mountain giant king neared cold desolate Dragon City, to the northeast, a ferocious army walked out of the Lake of Death. This monster army was even more terrifying than the monsters led by the mountain giant king. They were all water creatures of the Lake of Death. Their looks were extremely strange, completely beyond the imagination of the players. When the live stream switched over, many viewers felt uncomfortable. The monsters were all strange in appearance. Some had tentacles on their heads, some had lumps of flesh on their skin, and some were twisted and limping on the ground. Their appearance was even stranger than the strange creatures in the movies. They were also covered in mucus, and they looked disgusting. Wow, are all these things in the lake of death? The monster's beard is actually an octopus beard. Looking at the suction cups, my phobia is acting up. How disgusting. Shouldn't the water dwellers be mermaids? Why are they so ugly? It's probably because the environment is too dark that they grow up casually. I'm going to vomit. Not only are these monsters astonishingly ugly, but their numbers are also astonishing. Looks like they're not inferior to the mountain giant king's army. An army of a million appearing in both directions at the same time, how can we fight? Looking at the army of monsters in the lake of death, the players felt helpless. In their eyes, there was no room for resistance in this war. Facing these incomparably powerful monsters, other than instantly collapsing, there was no other possibility for the huge and unreal city of the cold desolate Dragon City. Some players in the cold desolate Dragon City had even taken out return scrolls, preparing to return to the safest Iron Skull City. Ding! Your city cold desolate Dragon City is about to face a monster invasion. Please immediately send the guards to battle. Lorne sat in the fortress on the city wall and looked at the distant mountain range. That was where the mountain giant king was attacking. There were already sounds coming from there, and it seemed that the monsters would reach here in a short time. At that moment, a notification appeared in front of Lorne. Ding! Commander of the Iron Skull City Army, Rhett, requests to assist Cold Desolate Dragon City in the defense of the city. Do you agree? Rhett wanted to help? 
Lorne was surprised and quickly decided. Soon, a portion of the city guards stood on the city wall. Lorne arrived beside Red to check on them. Didn't you say that Iron Skull City would not participate in the Battle of Cold Desolate Dragon City? Why did Commander Red still choose to join with his men? Lorne asked casually. As the city guards of Iron Skull City, our only duty is to protect the safety of Iron Skull City. Under normal circumstances, we are not allowed to participate in other forces' wars, but... Red said in a low voice, Cold Desolate Dragon City has an extraordinary meaning to Iron Skull City. Its existence has greatly affected the subsequent layout of Iron Skull City on the battlefield. After consideration from City Lord answer, you have decided to let me send a portion of the city guards to help you defend, but there are some things that I have to say in advance. We will help you defend, but if there is a situation where you can't be saved, I will very likely prioritize the army. When I think you can't resist, we will directly retreat. I hope you can understand our actions. Of course. Lorne smiled and nodded, Cold Desolate Dragon City is very grateful that Iron Skull City has chosen to provide us with some help. No matter how much support you provide, we will remember it. Red nodded, then waved his sword and said, All city guards, build a defensive formation with the city wall and resist the attacks of the monsters with all your might. With that, a large group of city guards quickly arrived. The help that Iron Skull City had provided to Cold Desolate Dragon City this time was less than 10,000 people. Moreover, these 10,000 people could leave the battlefield at any moment, so he should not have too much hope in them. Boom! As the mountain giant king neared, the entire Cold Desolate Dragon City trembled. This boss was too huge and its entire body was made of hard rocks. Its weight was hard to estimate. Around it, there were more than a million monsters gathered. Most of the monsters were around level 40. To the current players, this was not a level that they could not resist. However, the only thing to worry about was the boss's level. If the other party's level exceeded 50, the entire battle would be lost. Looking at the army of monsters in the distance, Lorne could not help but be a little nervous. The appearance of this boss was too terrifying. It looked as huge as the two-headed crocodile dragon he had seen in the Lake of Death. After all, the two-headed crocodile dragon was a level 100 boss. This guy could not be a level 100 boss, or else things would be troublesome. Moreover, there were so many monsters that there was no way to leave the city to fight. They had to wait for the other party to reach the city. Otherwise, if they rushed into the sea of monsters, Aisha would not be able to protect Lorne. However, the problem was that letting the monsters directly rush to the bottom of the city wall had a huge impact on the cold desolate dragon city. Aisha, in the battle later, deal with that boss first. After killing it, return immediately. Don't worry about the other monsters for the time being. Lorne opened the map of the cold desolate dragon city and found a large number of monsters in the northwest and northeast directions. Moreover, among these monsters was a huge boss that could deal immense damage to the city wall. In order to ensure the safety of the city wall of the cold desolate dragon city, Aisha had to deal with these two bosses first. Yes, master. Aisha wore a red cloak. Her slender figure was so thin in the huge city wall, but on this battlefield, she was the key to determining if she could win the battle. While the two were discussing their strategy, a short monster had already arrived near the city wall. Tisk, 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 I smell humans. What an impulsive smell. The demon ghost let out a sharp roar and finally waved its sharp claws, roaring, charge. Destroy this city and kill all the humans inside. As soon as it finished speaking, countless monsters rushed towards the cold desolate dragon city. These monsters had no strategy. Before the monster could get close, the pets beside Lorne drew their bows, and dozens of bows and arrows were scattered below the city wall. Minus 1205. Minus 1252. Minus 1267. Minus 1221. 
small artillery had a longer range than the players, and when these arrows hit the monsters, a pile of high damage values immediately appeared. Chapter 279, Exaggerated City Wall Defense Look, Tyrant's pet has attacked. What's going on? It only dealt slightly more than a thousand damage. Looks like Tyrant's strength is only so-so. Although this damage is stronger than players of the same level, it does not match Tyrant's identity. This is bad. Those players who participated in the event were definitely cheated. Don't jump to conclusions so early. The true expert beside Tyrant is the red-cloaked elf beside him. Without her, who would dare doubt Tyrant's strength? Hundreds of meters away, the players standing on the high platform began to discuss. The players standing on the city wall began to whisper after seeing this phenomenon. They could not help but doubt Tyrant's strength. Although in the previous battle, they knew that Tyrant's pets could deal tens of thousands of damage, that was only one person after all, and the opponents now were millions of monsters. No matter how powerful an elven assassin was, it could not determine the direction of this war. With that in mind, they all wanted to retreat. But at that moment, the monster had come within a hundred yards of the city wall. At this distance, archer players could use their advantage in height to shoot at the monsters in front of them. Mage players could not attack the monsters yet. However, to his disappointment, these players did not take the initiative to attack. They seemed ready to see what Lorne would do. How terrifying, Sister Guild Leader! In the direction of the Silver Snow Guild, a group of beautiful players poked their heads down the city, but in the next second, they were so frightened that they took a few steps back. Thousands of monsters had already gathered under the city wall. The dense appearance made one scalp tingle. Moreover, there were more than a million monsters. They revealed their sharp teeth and prepared to deal a devastating blow to the city wall. This was also the problem that the players were most worried about. After all, there were so many monsters. Even if each one ate a little of the city wall's durability, in such a crazy state, they would quickly gnaw a huge hole in the city wall that was dozens of meters tall. At that time, the players who had entered combat would have no chance of escaping. Wah, guild leader, will we be buried by these ugly monsters later? I'm so cute. How can I die under the mouths of these ugly monsters? When the city wall collapses, I will definitely choose to kill myself to end this terrifying nightmare. Sister guild leader, I'm so panicked. By the way, guild leader, why don't you let us attack? The sisters of the Silver Snow Guild could not understand. The order that Twinkle Rose had given them was to not attack for the time being. This was suspicious. After all, the Silver Snow Guild was different from the other guilds. The relationship between the Silver Snow Guild and Tyrant was extraordinary. Even if they could not defeat the monsters in this city defense war, the sisters of the Silver Snow Guild would definitely help Tyrant fight to the last moment. Let's wait and see. Tyrant has to let the more than 200,000 people know that the cold desolate Dragon City has the ability to resist the monsters. Otherwise, they will not pick up their weapons to fight. Twinkle Rose looked at Tyrant. The man was not flustered at all. He only stood calmly on the city wall, as if he did not see the million monsters approaching. At this moment, more than a million monsters had arrived at the bottom of the city wall. They waved their sharp claws and began to attack the city wall. How long do you think this city wall can last? This city wall is so thick. I think it can last for an hour. Brother, you're too confident. There are so many monsters, and there are also tomb raiders who specialize in destroying the city wall. I think it will take half an hour. I guess in ten minutes, those players did not even release an arrow. They let the monsters attack. I think this city wall can't even last ten minutes. I think in five minutes, when the mountain giant king comes, he will probably be able to kick a huge hole in the city wall. When they saw the dense swarm of monsters, the surrounding onlookers shook their heads. They did not think that the city wall could withstand so many monsters. But just as everyone thought that the city wall would collapse, 
something shocking happened. Minus zero. Minus zero. Minus zero. Minus zero. Minus zero. Countless damage numbers popped up with sparks. They were all zero. The crazy attacks of these monsters did not cause any damage to the city wall. Pfft. When they saw this scene, the players who had been guessing that the city wall would collapse in a few minutes spat out blood. These were all level 40 monsters. Their attacks exceeded 2000 points. However, such a group of monsters did not cause any damage to the city wall. This was too ridiculous. How high was the defense of the city wall? The players who saw the scene through the live stream widened their mouths in shock. When the beautiful players of the Silver Snow Guild saw this scene, their faces were also flushed. They looked at the monster that was crazily chiseling under the city wall but did not achieve anything. Sisters, do you see this? These monsters are completely useless. They can't break through the city wall's defense. They are all living targets now. Everyone only needs to stand on the city wall and attack from afar. Twinkle Rose shouted happily at the sisters behind her. Sister Guild Leader, we're going to be rich. Heavens, there are more than a million monsters with no ability to counterattack. Boohoo, I believe Brother Tyrant is right. Unfortunately, our Silver Snow Guild only sent 10,000 people this time. If only all of us came. It's useless. Look at how high the defense of these monsters is. Only the elite players of the guild can break through their defense. The other sisters will probably be useless. All right, all right. Little cuties of the Silver Snow Guild, let's happily deal damage. This time, everyone who has broken through to level 30 will get a limited edition bag. Thank you, Sister Guild Leader. Sister Guild Leader, I love you to death. I want to warm your bed tonight. The beautiful players of the Silver Snow Guild were all extremely happy. More than a million monsters had been blocked under the city wall. Now, they only needed to stand on the city wall to kill the monsters. It was too comfortable. Chapter 280, Aisha Attacks Brothers, let's kill monsters and snatch the experience points. All archers, fire. The mages of the guild are attacking the monsters under the city wall indiscriminately. Don't mix together. There aren't that many monsters. The few of you, go over there and use your AoE skills to snatch the monsters from the other guilds. When they saw that the monsters could not break through the defense of the cold desolate dragon city, the members of the guilds began to attack. There were many monsters under the city wall now. Almost one skill could hit more than a dozen monsters. Although the damage each time was very low, it could not compare to the many players around. Everyone used one skill each. With dozens of skills, even if these monsters were level 40, they could not withstand such terrifying damage. Fire Zone Cold Ice Zone Icicle Chain Fireball Roasting Flame At this moment, countless lights flashed on the city wall. All the players released their skills crazily towards the bottom of the city wall. The monster's health decreased rapidly, especially when the AoE skill triggered the critical hit effect. One skill could take the lives of several level 40 monsters. Some people even began to glow with a golden light, a sign of leveling up. Ha ha ha, this gold coin was worth it. Yes, although I can't see which monster I killed. My experience points are increasing so quickly. If I can level up like this in the future, I'll wash tyrant's feet every day. Scram. Useless things. I'll say this today. If tyrant can give me such a good opportunity to farm monsters every day, I will drink all the water in the basin. You just want free drinks. You're all ruthless people. Aisha, the mountain giant king is not here yet. Go warm up first. Lorna's gaze was fixed on the huge creature in the distance, but the boss seemed to be very cowardly. It did not move for a long time and stayed in the distant mountain range, as if it was using the small monster to drain the defense power of the cold desolate dragon city. This was not what Lorne wanted. 
he wanted to kill this boss in one go and kill the octopus sea demon leader in the northeast. Looking at the current situation, this plan could not be implemented for the time being. Because there was a limit to the range of activity between pets and their masters, Aisha could not fight so far away alone. Now, she could only wait for the mountain giant king to attack. Fortunately, the octopus sea demon leader in the northeast was also waiting for the opportunity. As if they had agreed, the two bosses crouched down at one place and waited for the monsters to weaken the defense before launching a fatal attack. This stumped Lorne. He had originally wanted to kill a boss to advertise the cold desolate dragon city. But now, it seemed that he could only let Aisha go to the city to harvest some monsters. These monsters were all level 40 high-level monsters, and there was no lack of elite or even bronze-level monsters among them that could give him a high amount of experience points. Step. At the command, Aisha's small boots stepped on the wall, then she leaped her body like a willow leaf falling into a surging tide. However, she was not controlled by these hideous monsters. Instead, she quickly waved the sharp blades in her hand and began to dance her beautiful dance of slaughter on the battlefield. Minus 115,900, critical. Minus 114,300, critical. Minus 115,500, critical. Minus 112,100, critical. Minus 114,400, critical. Aisha's attack power was linked to Lorne's attributes. When Lorne's attributes were stronger, Aisha's attributes would increase four times. Because Lorne had changed a level 40 platinum grade equipment previously, he now had 6,600 plus magic attack power and Aisha also had 26,000 physical attack power. Although she did not have an AoE skill, Aisha's phantom blink skill allowed her to reach the enemy in an instant. Therefore, her current killing speed made it difficult for all the players on the city wall to distinguish her. Almost in a few seconds, dozens of huge critical hits appeared in the sky, causing the players on the city wall to rub their eyes hard, thinking that they were seeing things. The players who saw this scene in the live stream almost had their eyes pop out. Gosh! Where did such a ridiculous number come from? It's Tyrant's elf pet. I can't see where she is. This is too terrifying. 110,000 critical hit damage, is this what a player can do? It feels like we're not on the same level as Tyrant. What level? We're not playing the same game as Tyrant. That makes sense. At this moment, no one dared to doubt Lorne's confidence. To be honest, even Lorne was surprised. He did not expect that the level 30 Aisha could deal as high as 110,000 critical damage to a level 40 monster. After all, with the level suppression effect, if he wanted to deal 110,000 damage in this state, he had to deal at least 190,000 damage. Didn't this mean that the current Aisha had a chance of hitting 200,000? Lorne gasped. This result was too crazy. One had to know that when players faced level 40 monsters, they could only deal about 1,000 points of damage. Only the top high-level players could deal more than 2,000 points of damage. However, there was still a 100 times difference between 2,000 and 200,000. I wonder how powerful Aisha will be after she completely awakens the power of the Holy Angel Gabriel. According to the information he had learned from the Iron Skull City's library, Gabriel at the peak was on the same level as an Abyss ruler as a Saint level expert. Above the Saint level was the God level. Gabriel did not ignite her divine flame, but because she was an angel, after being forcefully enhanced by the light power of the Church of Light, she could still unleash the strength to resist demigods. That level was unimaginable to the current Lorne. He remembered that after liberating Domina in the Lake of Death, the power she unleashed was countless times stronger than the level 100 one-eyed giant snake. Let's take it slow. I'm still one step away from the Earth Realm. Lorne shook his head and smiled. Only players who had reached Class 2 could be considered to have entered the Earth Realm. At this moment, 
Lorne still needed to raise his pets to level 40 before he could reach class 2. It would probably take some time. Of course, if the following time could be the same as now, he was even confident that he could complete the class 2 advancement by today. But that was clearly impossible. Although Aisha was powerful, she was not a machine. After a high-intensity battle, she needed to rest, and the monsters here were not endless. As time passed, the number of monsters here began to decrease at a visible rate.